Good evening again, everybody. If I may call the meeting back to order, and I apologise for the break in the meeting. Uh, Mark, are we streaming? We are streaming. Thank you very much. Uh, I remind everybody, um, uh, please, about mobile phones and noise and disturbance so that we can more speedily get through the remainder of the agenda. Uh, turning to agenda item 7, please, the monthly cu council budget monitoring report. Councillor Goddard. Thank you, Leader. Uh, this report, which is set out on pages 67 to 96 of Pack A, deals with the Council's projected results for the financial year to the 31st of March 2024, and this is as they stood at the 31st of December 2023, and that's nine, month nine of the financial year. The General Fund revenue account continues to indicate a small underspend of £2,000 against budget. This is consistent with the reported position at month seven. However, additional cost pressures amounting to £3.6 million were identified, and these relate to continued escalations in demand arising from homelessness, looked after children, and adult social care. <coughs> these projected additional costs will be absorbed within earmarked reserves, which are projected to amount to £10.5 million at the end of the financial year. However, a surplus on our collection fund of £3.7 million has been identified and we will recognise the vast majority of the benefit of this in the new 24-25 financial year. In addition to earmarked reserves, we have also unallocated general balances amounting to £26.8 million, so in total we are projecting £37 million of reserves at our disposal at the end of the 23-24 financial year. Our existing programme of savings for 23-24 is unchanged from the position previously reported, and that we will ultimately achieve our entire target of £22.8 million. General fund capital expenditure for the financial year is now indicating an underspend within the year of £28.7 million, with anticipated expenditure expected to amount to £100.6 million. The vast majority of this underspend is proposed to be rephased into next year. The overall financial position is robust and sound, and this leaves us in a strong position to move into the new 24-25 financial year. The dedicated schools grant remains unchanged from the reported position at month seven. The housing revenue account continues to project a full year outturn, which is identical to budget at this stage. The housing revenue account capital expenditure for the year is projected at 82 million pounds, which is an underspend against budget of 1.9 million pounds, the vast majority of which again will be rephased into next year. I therefore move recommendation one of the report, which is set out on page 68. Page 95 sets out eight financially oriented recommendations, itemised A to I, all of which relate to the acceptances of grants and hence are self-explanatory. I therefore so move those recommendations too. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very much, Councillor Goddard. Uh, colleagues, are the recommendations agreed? Agreed. Agree. Agree. Thank you. Agenda item 8 is the Council's budget medium term financial forecast. Councillor Goddard. Thank you, Leader. This budget and medium term financial forecast is set out in Pack B and shows a small number of changes from the consultation budget which was discussed and approved by Cabinet at its December 2023 meeting. Insofar as 2425 is concerned, the final local government settlement has, has yielded a net improvement amounting to £974,000 whilst the work of our counter-fraud team has identified an additional £750,000 in retained business rates income. The increase in demand for our support with homelessness, looked after children and adult social care services, as reported in the month nine budget monitoring report, but reduced by improved commissioning savings, fully absorbs this additional income, such that the budget remains balanced. Additional capital expenditure amounting to £30 million has been added to the general fund, being further investment in SEND provision within the Brajat Borough, that's special educational needs, highways, digital technology, and adult residential care provision. It should also be noted that a further £108 million has been added to the housing revenue account in terms of additional housing provision. May I therefore remind Cabinet that the key provisions of this budget are, firstly, an increase of 2.99% in council tax together with the charging of 2% for the social care precept, giving a rise of 4.99% increase in council tax before the imposition of the London mayoral precept, 
uh, which I might remind you amounts to an 8.6% increase, yeah. which is very much higher than the prevailing rate of inflation. Yeah. Fees and charges within the borough will increase by the prevailing rate of inflation only. The retention of all frontline services with provisions to accommodate our demand growth and inflation have been included. A savings programme, which will reduce costs by 33.4 million across the medium term financial forecast, with 15.9 million pounds of this allocated to 24-25. A general fund capital expenditure programme that will see us invest 248 million pounds in our infrastructure across the five year period. The allocation of 7.5 million to enhance the level of our reserves across the five year term of the MTFF. On the housing revenue account, an increase in our rents by the consumer pricing lets plus 1% as permitted, and a capital expenditure program which will see us invest £550 million in our housing stock across the next five years. Uh, Leader, as was said at the outset, uh, the consultation budget was released to the select committees and to residents for comment. And I'm pleased to report that the weight of opinion uh, in that consultation was positive. Uh, There were inevitably some critical comments, but I think the encouraging thing to note um, is that um, uh, most of the criticisms that were raised and levelled are are issues which have been covered and addressed within this budget. So therefore, colleagues, I recommend this budget to you, and I therefore move recommendations one to six as set out in page two of Pack B. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Goddard. Um, this, um, the MTFF would now go to Council when it will be subject to debate, scrutiny, and I dare say amendment. Uh, so I not anticipate much discussion tonight. Um, before we uh, move the recommendations, um, before I put the recommendations, I, I just want to add my thanks to officers. I know that it has been a particularly challenging year to bring together the MTFF. Um, primarily is a consequence of very, very late notification of the final settlement. And I know that many officers work late at night to get these papers published. And that's work that goes on unseen, unheard of, in their own time, in their own homes. And and we're internally grateful for them for that work. Um, So please, uh, if you would please pass those thanks back, uh, Mr. Zayman, that will be appreciated. Uh, Colleagues, are the recommendations agreed? Agreed. Agenda item 9, the school's budget for next year. Councillor O'Brien. Sorry. Uh, Thank you very much, Leader. Agenda item 9, the school's budget for 2024-2025, seeks Cabinet approval following the required consultation process with our relevant stakeholders, including the school's forum. Council continues to manage the challenges arising from significant levels of underfunded demand and inflation within the ring-fenced school's budget. The dedicated school's grant funding is driven by pupil numbers, which has increased by 5.1%. Table 1 on page 99 shows the increase in funding for pupil numbers and the increase in number of pupils who are accessing the high needs block. Um, But note that this leaves a difference in funding for those pupils who are applying for or those just starting on the road of an EHCP as they they do not come into the actual funding allocation for this year. Details of the high needs block budget is still pending as Council awaits the outcome of the dedicated safety grant. Um, de- sorry, the, the, the DSG management submission, which is part of the, the safety valve program that Hillingdon is part of. Once this is received, it will be presented to schools forum for discussion and for decision. The council continues to scrutinise the independent and non-maintained special needs placements that are out of borough and where costs continue to increase due to capacity demands within borough. However, this has now started to be addressed by creating extra capacity in borough, albeit at a time of increased pressures due to large numbers of children requiring these particular placements. And uh, we can't ignore, again, as I said last year, the national and global issues with the cost of labour materials, um, issues with workforce and inflationary demands that are put upon us. 
the school's budget block must be approved by schools forum who initially rejected the council's request to transfer 0.75% um, which was what was asked of them, uh, well last year we asked for 0.5%, which is just short of £2.1 million from the school block to high needs blocks for 2024-2025. This could have had a serious impact on the safety valve agreement, meaning that the council would have had to have made a disapplication request to the DfE, of which the block transfer was approved. Um, so this funding will now um, assist with pressures in other areas of education. As nationally and all, all local authorities move closer to the prescriptive national funding formula that we have been moving forwards for for, very, for a number of years now, Hillingdon schools will move 10% closer this year using the set agreed factors. Um, as looked after children, lack children, are no longer an allowable factor, this for another year does not work in Hillingdon's favour as it is an authority that has a higher proportion of unaccompanied asylum seeking children that we cannot um, uh, put into those factors. As announced during 2023, the government through the DfE has extended the number of free childcare offers in, uh, available to working parents for early years for the forthcoming year. Uh, there will be new working parent entitlement introduced for two-year-olds this offer is for a maximum of 15 hours per week from the 1st of April 2024 and will be coming in very soon. And children aged 9 months to 2 years, this offer is for a, minimum of, a maximum of 15 hours a week and that will roll in from the 1st of September 2024. The intention is that these offers will be extended even further in 25-26 to a maximum of 30 hours per week. The local authority, this council, is required to set a local formula for both the two-year-old offer and the under-twos offer in the same way as it has done for three-year-olds and four-year-olds over the past six years. There are now several funding streams in the early years block. The funding streams rates require at least 95% of the funding to be passed on to providers, and the funding categories can be found on page 104 of this report if you are interested. <coughs> The allocation of funding are based on January 2023 data. Another headcount will be made in July 2024, but it should be noted that new streams may very well come on in the future, and um, we're always slightly behind with numbers, um, as I've just suggested. The proposed rates for nursery providers has been calculated, and the, forum has, uh, the, the, the formula has now been shared with Schools Forum, um, whom agreed to the formula, and is now out for consultation with the early years provider as per recommendation four in this report um, to provide um, a delegated authority for urgency provisions should this be concluded and should be concluded by the end of this month, that's February 2024, so that we can then um, provide um, all of our rates out with, with agreement. This council continues to be a high delegator, retaining very little centrally, with most of the grant going to schools. As in past years, the proportion that is retained are for centralised services like um, our heavily used school admissions um, teams and services and for school improvement. Um, uh, the recommendations are set out now on page 98. Uh, there are five recommendations and I therefore move them and ask that they are approved this evening. Thank you very much, Councillor Ryan, and uh, thank you also to your officers for managing what is a very complex uh, financial regime for, for, for our schools in a particularly challenging uh, backdrop um, of falling school roles within London uh, with inadequate government funding to support people with uh, special education needs and with an increasing demand for more placements for special education needs. I'm pleased that our council is responding to those challenges well through your leadership and I thank you for that. Colleagues, are the five recommendations agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you. Agenda item 10, changes to the school role, school's admission arrangements, uh, White, Whitehall Infants and Junior Schools. Councillor O'Brien. Uh, thank you again, Leader. So, agenda item 10. This is, as you said, um, for Whitehall Infant and Junior School. This proposal came to us, uh, Cabinet, in October 2023. This is to reduce the pupil admission number, the PAN, for um, both the infant and junior schools 
from 120 uh, pupils per year group to 90 pupils per year group. Um, schools have to apply and it obviously has to fit in with our place planning to ensure that we have enough available spaces for um, the children and young people of our, our borough. Um, the, it has gone out to consultation, um, as it always has to do, but this will not set in place until September 2025. So if you're wishing to reduce PAN, there always has to be quite a long um, lead-in for, for that. Um, the, the, the consultation went out um, to a, a very wide um, readership in excess of 52,000 ch children that attend our Hillingdon schools um, and 11,500 uh, 11 of them which att attend mainstream community schools. It went out onto our council website and as consultations go, this is a f um, always a fully inclusive uh, consultation. Um, the recommendation is um, as requested on page 100 and the three recommendations are page 114 um, and this evening I ask for um, to approve us, so I move them. Thank you very much. Uh, as I mentioned a second ago, that there is a backdrop of falling school roles across London, nationally, uh, I believe, um, uh, but particularly in London uh, as birth rates have fallen. Um, this is a sen sensible adjustment. Uh, not only does it ensure that the provision of our spaces is more in line with the demand, but it also reduces the financial consequence of that falling school rolls on the schools in question. Do these recommendations agree? Agree. agree. Thank you. Agenda item 11, the Hillingdon Community Infrastructure Levy Charging Schedule Review. Council Labour. Uh, thank you, Leader. This report begins on page 121. Cabinet approval is sought for the publication of a SIL draft charging schedule subsequent statutory eight-week public consultation. This begins a formal review of the SIL charging schedule, with the next steps being examination in public um, with revised rates. Um, SIL is an important uh, contributor to council capital resources uh, to enable us to provide infrastructure um, across the borough. It is in addition to the specific S106 um, requirements that come for particular sites and which need to be spent in relation to those sites and the obligations which they are secured. SIL enables us to do um, wider work. The current charging schedule um, has a number of anomalies um, which didn't exist when, when the rates uh, were first set. These are the, the rates are set out on page 124. Um, there's been a general um, adjustment where we have evidence to support it for um, increased rates, but you will also note um, that we currently have no provision to charge for data centres, which is a, a, a very large, uh, can be a very large item, um, certainly in square footage terms, um, or film studios, um, because they are not in our current schedule. So this will rectify that as well as um, adjust the proposed charges for other items. There are three recommendations on the report as scheduled on page 122, and I therefore move. Uh, thank you very much, Council Lavery. Uh, there is undoubtedly a shortage of um, development housing within our borough. Um, not only is that recognised with regards to private purchase, but also with, with regards to social housing. Uh, and one of the oppositions to development is often voiced by residents who are concerned about infrastructure. The SIL is expressly intended to provide the additional funding necessary to develop that infrastructure to allow further development. And this should help us move towards uh, providing greater housing that's necessary within this borough and other commercial developments, uh, recognising the uplift in some of the fees and the new charging schemes. Colleagues, the recommendations agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Agenda item 12 is a preview of items that are going to be considered in part two of the report. Um, I particularly wish to draw attention uh, to item 13 in part two, which is the device refresh and licenses. Uh, this is about updating effectively our computer systems and uh, technology, hardware and software. Uh, without going into the detail of that, what I wish to draw attention to is the fact that it is our intention to donate up to 500 of our existing uh, systems, devices, um, to residents within our borough to enhance uh, their uh, ability to get online 
uh, and uh, to, for us to t help tackle digital exclusion. Um, I've just asked the report at uh, no, item 12 is noted. Is that noted, please? Noted. Thank you. Now I need to move into part two of the meeting and I ask for members of the public to retire and also for the <coughs> link, uh, for the YouTube link to be uh, broken. Thank you.